Welcome to Bloomberg Law on Demand. I'm Lee Pacquia. I recently sat down with Lori Hoberman. She's a partner at the law firm Chadbourne Park based here in New York City. We talked about LinkedIn's recent IPO and what the deal is going to mean for the tech space. Let's see what she had to say. So Thanks. when we look at LinkedIn, uh, we have uh, a really interesting deal from a lot of vantage points. What jumps out at you? <laughs> of course, the value. It's so, so high. And the question really is whether it, it all relates to reality within the company. But the other side of that is it's what the market is placing on it. And it mm. went, I guess it went out at about 83. And I think last time I checked today, it's probably at about 95, 96, somewhere in that People range. People were expecting it to come back to earth at a certain I know. point. It especially, hasn't happened yet. Especially after, it, I think uh, the last couple of days is when you could first short the stock. Mm -hmm. And I was watching it to see what would what would happen once people started shorting it because I would imagine there's probably a good number of folks that are shorting the stock right why, now. Why do you expect? Why do you think that there's been this delay? You know, I don't know. I think maybe maybe the, maybe, maybe the gonna valuation hold. is going to hold. It's it's uh, you know after a week to watch the trend up up a little bit. I think 122 might have been its peak. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's holding its own at about 95, 96 is interesting for That's the stock. Certainly surprising. Uh, not everyone, on, on the other hand, is thrilled with this deal. I'm going to read a quote from uh, Eric Telenis. Uh, he's the general manager at Zynga. Uh, a huge opening day pop is not a sign of a successful IPO, but rather a massively mispriced one. Bankers are rewarding their friends and themselves instead of doing their fiduciary duty to their clients. <laughs> interesting quote. <laughs> Any truth to this? It's uh, it's relevant for him, isn't it? Right. Zing, Zing we're certainly, yeah, is... we're, we're going to get there next, but <laughs> <laughs> let's focus on the quote All for right. now. Well, technically, the underwriters set the prices based on what their institutional buyers are going to buy in at. So the underwriters, the company, and the, the institutional buyers, everybody kind of agrees on what the price is. And two days, I think, before it went out, it was at about 35, and they ultimately went out at 45. So the folks at the company got 45 per share. The underwriters, depending on how they sold it, probably got 45 as well. And it's those first buyers, those institutional buyers who took the shares that, that did really well. And that could be why Zynga is questioning. <laughs> right. People say it's the easiest way to make money in this market. Yeah. Let's jump to Zynga. Um, they uh, are talking about potentially uh, coming up with their own IPO. Uh, <laughs> yep. I forget what was the specific date. That Did they have a date in mind or is this something to be determined? Somebody mentioned next week. Somebody mentioned in right. June. I, you know. How does the LinkedIn IPO bode for the tech sector? Is this a uh, game-changing event, so to speak? I think it is. I think it shows that the market has a real appetite for these types of companies. And LinkedIn was the first IPO in the social networking space. Mm -hmm. So it does show that there is an appetite. The fact that it didn't lose steam a week after after its trading it doesn't not the be all and end all of everything but but mm -hmm. it shows that it does it's able to hold its own at this price now you work with a lot of startup companies especially in <laughs> They're the tech celebrating space. right <laughs> is this changing their plans though is this something where if you're running a, a, a small startup uh, somewhere in the United States and you see the, the 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 price that the shares for LinkedIn are garnering today is this something that will make you kind of shift course I think that what it's doing is it's opening up another exit point for, for years and years, the M&A exit was the only one that was discussed. And I think now what we're seeing is more and more IPOs are starting to be considered as a possible exit. And that is that is a game changer. So that's a game changer for us. So if you're running Facebook right now, uh, so if Facebook, we're going to see Facebook go sooner. Yeah, I, I think Facebook, we, we, what we were thinking was Facebook would be out there sometime in the fall. I think that's what I was reading. And, and uh, maybe sooner. Zing, I'm surprised to see Zynga following this so quickly. And maybe it's because there was a, another company, uh, the Russian version of Google, I think, that went public yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Yan, Yandex. Yandex. Yeah, right. and has done very well in its first day and a half or so of trading. Mm -hmm. so. so what do you say to the commentators who are calling a bubble here? <laughs> any, any truth to their perspective? I, I don't think it's signs of a bubble yet. I think it's signs of what the market will bear for these particular companies. And I think it's showing maybe a little excitement or exuberance in the beginning for this type of a, an offering. Um, maybe the stock's going to come down a little bit. I don't know that it's going to come back down to where they initially thought it would be, 45, 35. I don't, I don't have a sense of that mm -hmm. at all. It's holding its own at the 95 mark. Some critics have said that IPOs like the one we just saw on LinkedIn are problematic because they don't quite allow small investors to participate in the game. Right. And if they do, they're at a tremendous disadvantage. Right. What to make of that? <laughs> 
the way the markets have changed in the last several years, it's absolutely right. It used to be through a broker, an individual investor could get a share of an IPO. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. So take me through, just for those of the of our viewers that, that aren't aware, what's the structural process of putting an IPO out there? What, what do lawyers actually, what's the step-by-step? -step? So the company retains an underwriter, or two, or in this case, three with LinkedIn. And the underwriters are the ones to gauge the market, and working with the company, they set the price for the shares. And when the company ultimately goes public, it tests that price for the shares with the, usually the institutional buyers because these days it's the institutional buyers that are coming on board and getting those shares before the individual investors are actually able to get them on the open market. So here I think what you see what happened was that the underwriters thought that there would be a market for the shares in the $45 range, clearly. Hmm. And the underwriters are conservative maybe not conservative as LinkedIn showed, maybe that's not how they want to be, but the underwriters are typically, typically conservative because they want to be able to show that the offering sold and right. that it sold successfully. So maybe they didn't gauge it the right way with this. And, and I, I, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. I don't think you can really criticize the underwriters for mispricing this, but I would bet that the next one to go, if it's Zynga, takes this all into account and thinks very carefully about whether it should be so conservative in the pricing. Looking down the road, do you see this as an area ripe for regulation? I mean, we have this situation mm -hmm. where it's becoming, IPOs are becoming a part of the market that aren't, isn't necessarily open to uh, smaller retail mm -hmm. investors. It sounds like somewhere that Congress might be able to jump in to make it a more level playing field, perhaps? You know, I, I think the way it is now, it's kind of a victim of the, the regulations that have come down the pike. Really? Which ones? Well, I think that the way that the market is so um, exclusive of the individual investors, I think that there's a, you know, it's, it's kind of responding to a concern that the underwriters see to keep the level, to keep the buyers at the level mm -hmm. of the institutional buyers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether the regulation, regulations that we see coming down in the future, if any, will open it up more to the individual investors. I'm not sure that that'll be the case. I think individual investors see it when it's first coming into the market, which, which changed mm. over the years. Interesting. So all eyes on Zynga. We'll have to have you back yes. in uh, to Thank discuss you. that IPO, however it's going to play out. I have my, <laughs> my thoughts, but we'll see. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, Lori. Thank you. That's Lori Hoberman. She is a partner at the law firm Chadbourne Park, and she's based here in New York City. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.